Hey everyone, in today's video I have two fun dice games to share that are perfect for kindergarten, first, and second grade students. Now I love dice games because they are typically low prep, all you really need are some dice, and while these games were meant to be played with partners, and I'll share how to do that, I picked these two specifically because they can definitely be played independently as well. So if you're still doing social distancing in your classroom, these will definitely work, and when I explain each game I'll kind of explain how to differentiate that as well. Now like I said, I love using dice during games, and if you've been following me for a while, you probably know that I have shared a ton of dice and card games. I love them because they are no prep, so I actually have a whole playlist I'll add this video to, but the playlist looks like this up here, and there are a ton of other short videos where I share fun card games and dice games that you can play with students. I even made one in particular last year that students can play independently for social distancing. That was with a deck of cards, and that video looks like that. So if you're ready to learn these two new games, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's just get started. The first game I wanna share with you today is great for your first or second grade students to play, and it is called Knockout. To play this game, your students will only need a pair of dice, so just two dice, and let me just show you how to play. Okay, so for the game Knockout, like I said, you only need two dice, so just a pair of dice that students can either pass back and forth or they can each have their own, it's up to you. And what you'll do is you will want to choose a knockout number. Now you'll want that to be a common number that's rolled when you roll two dice, so six, seven, or eight are the most common, commonly rolled numbers. So I usually have a start with seven, but this is a way to switch it up. So we will write seven up here, and that is our knockout number. If you choose six, you'd write it there, same with eight. And what students will do is they will take turns, and one way also to differentiate is to have more or less rounds. I usually like to start with 10, but I also have a blank sheet that students could do how many, however many or however little they would like. So let's start with the 10 rounds. Player one will roll their dice they have eight. They'll add the two numbers together, and that is their round one. Then player two will go 10. They will simply roll the dice back and forth, and the game will continue like this. They'll just keep writing down the numbers, but if a student rolls a knockout number, a seven, that means they're, oh, like I just did. So they actually have to cross out that number up there. So they are now on, and actually this one's a skip too because they had a seven. So not only do they lose this turn, they're knocked out, they also lose any previous ones. So right now the sum of player one is 14, player two has zero. And they will keep going back and forth, and as you can see it can get pretty nerve wracking towards the end. Oh, but here we have a 12, because if you're all the way down, you know, on roll nine and somebody gets a knockout number, then that kind of stinks for that player. So once you get to the end, players will go ahead and tally up their total amount, and whoever has the higher amount is the winner. They can write it down here and circle the winner. So the way I would play this individually is students could actually just use a completely blank paper if they needed to, and you can even play this game whole group by giving everybody a pair of dice. So you could do it in small groups, they could stay at their tables, or you can do this whole group and you can even play along with them. And you're just gonna set the timer for you know a few minutes and say, uh, you're gonna keep rolling and see who can get the highest sum before they get knocked out, or they can do 10 rounds, so students would just keep track themselves. So, up oh, a seven, so round one is, a, is nothing. Three. They basically just roll the dice 10 times, so you wouldn't even need five minutes on the clock. It shouldn't take too long for them to get their 10 rolls. Oh, seven. So they're back to zero. And so they can simply with a little, oh my gosh, piece of scrap paper like this, they can go ahead and see what their sum would be at the end. So then once the 10 turns are done, you can either have students put their hands in the air or they can put their pencil down to signify that they're done. And you can go around the classroom or around the small group and see who had the highest number. 
The second game I want to share with you today is called Sevens, and this one is perfect for kindergarten and first grade students. Now for this game, your students will need six dice. Each of them will need six dice. So unlike the last game, Knockout, where everyone could kind of play at their desk, because you need so many dice, you might not have that many, this one would be great in like a center or for a small group little activity. Let me show you how to play this one. Okay, for the game sevens, like I said, you will need a pair, or sorry, you will need six dice. So this one, unlike the last game where I said, you know, everyone could have two pairs of dice, you could play a whole group against the teacher, unless you have a ton of dice, I mean, you can do that, but this one would probably be best in like a small group where students could play against one another uh, separated if you're doing social distancing. But for the regular game with player one and player two, students will simply roll all six dice and then I like this because students have to look for sums of seven. So this is player one's roll. So we have a one and a six. If they find a sum of seven, those have to get removed. And then they'll see what is left. And I can't see any other sevens we can make. So we have five, 10, 14, 15. That is nice and big. So this could definitely be for your older kids too, depending on how big they get. And then player two would grab all six. And again, they're looking for seven. So six and one, three and four, and then we have five left. And students simply go back and forth, rolling all of them. So if I was in kindergarten, I would only have them do, you know, one round at a time. I wouldn't have them total it up at the end. But with first and second grade, you can have them find the total at the end. So here, let's see, do we have any sevens? We have a six and one again. Then we have three, five, seven, nine. And students go back and forth, back and forth until you can either, like I said, have them compare again in kindergarten or first grade. You could actually have them just compare and see who won each round and they can circle it and they could just do round by round without a total. And later in first grade or in second grade, you can have them add it up at the end, see who had the bigger total, and that is the winner. So there are two fun dice games that you can easily teach in your own classrooms. And like I said, I love using dice or a deck of cards because they're tactile, they're hands-on, they are fun, and kids tend to love these games. If you like this video or plan to use any of these games in your own classroom, make sure to give this video a like so I know that you enjoyed it, or let me know down in the comments which game you are going to try with your kids. Remember, if you're looking for more dice and card games, I have that playlist right there to check out after this video. Also, in case you're looking for more tips and ideas, I share a new video every Thursday and Sunday morning here on my YouTube channel. So be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can see all my new videos. See you guys in the next one. Bye.